Hi, this is Kelly from The Truth and Story, and today we are going to be looking at a very interesting and different deck um, that I traded uh, recently, and I'm actually just yesterday, and I'm quite excited to get my hands on it. I have researched, I have researched this deck quite extensively because I had intended to purchase it. There were a couple things that I didn't particularly like about it, uh, which I'll get into after I explain. Uh, the system a little bit more. However, in you know having it in hand, I will say that those aren't going to uh, bother me from working with it. Um, so this is a bar part of a two deck uh, kind of collection uh, that is called the Book of Shadows, and this is Volume One, as above, uh, which deals with sort of the higher aspects of paganism um, and. The, and and to some, some degree witch or witchcraft, and to some degree Wicca, uh, which some people have said in the guidebook they use too interchangeably. Um, at least in the Fool's Dog app, which is what I have, which I'll talk about in a minute, of the guidebook, I didn't see that too much. Um, I, I understand that there is a you know there is a big difference between paganism and Wicca. Wicca is a pagan religion, so it's part of paganism, but it doesn't define paganism. Um, but I found it as somebody who has a pretty good handle on basic um, ideology of paganism as a whole, um, as well as a base understanding of Wicca. I didn't find it too difficult to understand what was you know what they were discussing. Um, and I didn't find that this to be a deck that you would only want to use if you were a Wicca, or if you were a Wiccan. I think that it, most of it applies to paganism in general, at least at a beginner's sense. And um, I'm quite looking forward to working with it. So there is that. Um, the, so anyways, the um, As Above deck, which is what this is, um, sort of deals with the higher themes and then the so below deals with the more practical living aspect of being a pagan in a modern world. That deck doesn't appeal to me as much because I'm interested in learning uh, what's in this deck um, and the more modern aspect while interesting of the so below deck um, it just doesn't appeal to me personally. It's probably not one that I will get except for that I do have a very box checking mentality. If I have one in a set, then I kind of want the second in a set. <laughs> so I'm not going to say that I won't ever get it, but it's a, it doesn't appeal to me as much. But it is part of that set. This deck can be purchased either as a card set with a little white book. Isabel, as a card set with a little white book, which is a low scarabia little white book, which means many languages, which means this deck, which is completely, um, in my opinion, gone off on its own system, has about 14 pages. Um, while I find this to be useful as a quick reference, so it is great for that, just to kind of hit on everything quickly, uh, in terms of really getting your toes into the sand with this deck, so to speak, I don't think 14 pages is going to cut that. I mean, look at that. However, uh, you can, A, get the set that has the full color book uh, in it that has all of the cards from both um, uh, from both decks in color with lots of information written by Barbara Moore. You can get that set. But if you already have this set or if you like having apps, which I do, uh, having this deck and then getting the Fool's Dog app, let me pull it up here, um, allows you to have access to the full guidebook. So you can hit explore and you can see that there is the, um, the entire guidebook. Um, now, now this does not have all the cards for the so below, but there is an app for the so below. Um, but it does have the sections talking about combining the cards, uh, the two decks, because there is um, the, the purpose of this is also to be able to combine this into a very large deck. Um, so it has all the information here, and this is written by Barbara Moore, uh, which is fantastic. And so then you can also explore the cards. 
and so when you flip the card over, you're able to get the full text for each of the cards. And so personally, with this, I have read through this guidebook. I wasn't feeling well yesterday. Um, and so I did read through the entire guidebook with this um, deck, and uh, I like Barbara Moore guidebooks. I think she does a really good job, and um, because this system is so different than traditional tarot, I think it's almost imperative to either have the full guidebook or to get this set and get the app so that you have access to the text. Unless you're very, um, if you're very learned in these types of things, then you may just read with it intuitively and not need that reference. Uh, I particularly am not, um, so I think it's essential. Which brings us to the point that this is very much deviated from traditional tarot uh, to the degree of the Wildwood tarot, um, perhaps even to more degree than the Wildwood tarot. Um, and so decks such as the Wildwood tarot, uh, the Chrysalis tarot, uh, and I believe this tarot, in some ways have deviated so much that they're their own system, and I don't really uh, think of them so much as tarot. Um, however, with this deck, as well as with the Wildwood Tarot, but with this deck, since was what we're talking about, um, you can see the correspondence to the uh, traditional meanings. Sometimes it's more of a stretch than others, but it is there and it's an interesting layer, but I would personally suggest uh, letting this be as it is and using the traditional tarot meanings as just another correspondence, as a uh, sub, sub layer, so to speak, um, because it is there and it is interesting to see it, especially it's there more strongly, I think, in the majors than in the minors, uh, but it is, it is present um, and it does get addressed in the guidebook um, but I think that per my personal opinion on how to approach these kinds of decks is to approach them as they are let them be as they are if, if you were interested in this um, as it is to purchase it then you know sink into it as its own system and then you know note the traditional meanings as that sort of okay this is an added layer if that makes sense instead of the traditional being meanings being the forefront and then this uh, sub layer of extra meaning it's actually reversed in these decks where we have the the new system that's here and we have the traditional meanings as the sub layer that's how i uh, see this kind of a deck um, and that is how i intend to approach it and how i would recommend it um instead of trying to constantly fit, you know, sometimes a square peg in a round hole kind of, meant, you know, feeling where you're really trying to squeeze it in there. You know, don't try so hard. Let it be what it is. And then kind of you can, you can see those correspondences and they do add a nice layer. Okay, I think I've, I've explained that as best as possible. Now, as to the differences, and there are quite a few, which is why I have um, them laid out this way because I want to uh, go over those differences here. Uh, this is very elemental uh, heavy deck, which I love because, as you know, I'm quite um, the idea of the elements and how they uh, correspond with each other, react to each other, um, that kind of thing is very important to me in tarot reading. And so I quite like that aspect. Um, it is also very goddess-centric, um, but I don't believe that it is uh, imbalanced because of these two suits, which we'll go, go into. But where you can really see the goddess um, aspect of this deck is in the court cards. Uh, the court cards, so the um, what would be pages... Um, are the elemental energy of, a, of the deck, which is um, represented by an elemental, which is more like a uh, manifestation of the suit. And so for fire, we have the fire salamander. For water, we have the Nixies, although I thought they were Undines. Uh, that's what came to mind first, but they're Nixies in the guidebook. Uh, for air, we have Sylphs. And for earth, we have uh, Gnomes. Uh, I thought that the Gnomes were going to be quite annoying, but they're actually not as bad in person as I thought they were going to be. Uh, 
Then for the rest of the court cards, we have the Maiden, Mother, and Crone, which is a very important energy for me. It has been important to me uh, for many years. It's the one um, aspect of paganism from way back in, in studying it uh, when I was, you know, kind of coming to terms with where, what direction I was going to go in my spirituality that really strongly resonated with me and always has. And so we have the triple aspect. So we have the Maiden of Fire, the Mother of Fire, and the crone of fire. Uh, and so each of the um, court cards, so to speak, of the suits have the elemental and then the maiden mother and crone. I think this is a fantastic. It's beautiful. Uh, I will say that in terms of artwork, the crones, in my opinion, suffer uh, from... Uh, I think the problem for me with the artwork of these is that it's like they have kept young, youthful bodies and then stuck old age faces and wrinkles on faces where in the hair and things doesn't uh, always work. Uh, she looks like Emperor Palpatine's wife. Uh, the ravages of time on her face, but not the rest of herself, um, is kind of Sith-like, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> um, but again, it's something that I can get over. So that is um, how the court cards work. Now, you would think because of this energy of the mother uh, aspects of the goddess here, um, would make this a very heavily feminine deck, but that's actually not the case, and that is because of what happens within the suits. Uh, so I'm going to go over that really quick uh, before we start to go through the cards. I know this is a little more... I've done, I do this on certain decks that um, I just think need to explain the structure uh, foundationally there before we get into just looking at the cards. The suits are broken into their elements. So you have earth, air, water, and fire. However, each of the suits encompasses a specific area. So for example, earth, which has the gnomes as the elemental, um, is about the magic of the natural world. So the magic of the body, which we see here in the ace. This is one of the most problematic cards for me because we have the power of the body, uh, but some of that person's body has been smudged away, and this a man's bits have been erased, and I think that is ridiculous. Either have him intact, like you see in the Druidcraft, and nobody has died, although I have seen that people have drawn pants on Druidcraft Hanged Man, which, okay, everybody has their own uh, sensibilities, um, but either have his bits intact or put a loincloth on him or a pair of pants or something. Uh, but to have the body with just his bits wiped out uh, like a Ken doll, I think is rather ridiculous. That's probably the most problematic artwork for me. There are some other ones that aren't great, uh, but for the most part, the artwork is quite beautiful. Um, but we'll come back to that. So we have um, the you know so we have say, say the body, we have uh, the ocean, we have the plant life. So you have sort of the natural magic of the world. Uh, then in air we have divination. So these are the divination and or divining and interpreting reality, how we're going to interpret things. And so we have things like dreams and the pendulum and scrying and omens, these kinds of um, types of thing for this these two. I love that. I love both of those. I really love the suit of water and fire in this deck because it really puts a balance of masculine and feminine energy because in the suit of water, uh, we have the uh, features and faces of the goddess. Uh, so we have like Aphrodite, we have Flora, we have Bridget, um, 
we have so we have various aspects of the goddess. Uh, the ace is a, a chalice and an athami kind of put together, which symbolizes uh, sort of the union of the goddess and the god, <clears throat> metaphorically. <laughs> I don't think I need to point it out. I mean, it's quite clearly here. But we do also have Venus here, um, and we have Mars. So we have the male and female uh, energies uh, shown in the ace, but the actual aspects are the goddess aspects here. Now, in the fire suit, we have the aspects of astrological and cosmological. So we have the planetary uh, I know suns are not planets, but <laughs> bear with it. Uh, so we have the sun, and then we have like Mercury. Venus, of course, is a female aspect, but other than that, all of the gods um, are, are all of the they're gods, not um, female goddesses. Uh, so we and we have gorgeous representation of the planet itself, as well as then sort of the god. So we have Mercury, Venus, you know, Mars, Jupiter. We'll go through them all, but this very male, uh, and then we have the stars. So. So it's very astrological, but it also has the God energy very strongly. So between these two suits, we have um, a quite a balance there as well as in the uh, major arcana. Um, so the while we do have a goddess uh, focus in the courts, I do believe overall it to be quite a balance deck, which I quite love. So I love these two suits. Again, we're going to look at all these closely. Um, I just wanted to give you the idea of how the um, deck is comprised and how it works. Uh, so let me real quick uh, stick these with their suits. Now, the Little White Book, every name in this deck has been changed except for the World Card. The Little White Book does show the traditional correlation and then the new name. Uh, so that is there if you are new um, to tarot and you, you maybe don't know the numbers uh, very well. So that is here, although it's not on the deck, which I'm very glad for uh, because I don't think it's a major aspect. Um, I think you can see it in some of the cards, but I don't think it should be a focus so I'm glad that they're not on the deck itself uh, so we do have that though in the book guidebook uh, we also do have an explanation of how uh, the moon works um, basically because of this new moon spread but it does kind of give you that idea of the new moon as be what's beginning the waxing moon is how it progresses the full moon how it manifests itself the waning moon what what it will influence and then the next new moon so sort of the outcome or seed of the next moon so that's the only spread that is shown in the actual guidebook however in the larger guidebook uh, there is more um, now, Fool's Dog also has general spreads on each of theirs, but it tells you, you can see uh, from the Book of Shadows Tarot, so you can see that there are quite a few more. There were Past, Present, Future, New Moon, Celtic Cross, um, there's a Two Choices, a Pentagram, and there's this interesting big picture spread that I played around with a little bit uh, last night that I'll show you. Uh, so there are more spreads that are in the larger guidebook than there are in the Little White Book. Um, so again, in terms of the Little White Book, uh, if you just got this deck with this, I would say that's great for a quick reference, but you really need to either get the app with the book or get your hands on a copy of the full guidebook to really sink into this particular deck. That's just my opinion. Um, so let's take a look at the majors. Uh, so we have for zero, we have the Summerlands. And I quite love this because the Summerlands are is in pagan ideology. Uh, it is often the, the understanding of the place that, that you are at in between your incarnations. Uh, so you have, you know, finished off one life and you are, you know, going to be moving into the next arc incarnation. And the Summerlands is that place of rest and reflection um, on the past life before you move into the next life. And we actually have him sort of, this person is sort of... Um, 
coalescing, so to speak, into their next incarnation. So we have that idea um, of a new life, a fresh start, uh, because you don't take the memories generally uh, of the past incarnation into the new incarnation or the remembrance of the Summerlands. Uh, so he's starting to getting into this fresh start after taking the time to reflect on the past incarnation. So I quite love that. Uh, here we have the elements, which I, again I, I talked about are very important in this deck, uh, which I, I do love. And I love that we have for water sort of these seashells, we have pentacles, we have some stones, we have for the wands, we have fire around the wrist, and for the uh, swords or the air or the athamis, we have uh, feathers. Uh, so I do really like that, and I do like this, the hands being there because it, it is reminiscent of the magician, uh, that using all of the elements um, together um, and being able to manifest them with our hands, uh, with our wit, body and will, it's, everything is within us kind of idea uh, that I quite like. Um, it does go into some more detail about the seven hermetic principles. Uh, as a kind of interesting way of seeing how the energies work together or play off of each other. Um, so, for example, the principles of mentalism, so and how you have to have clear intent, uh, correspondence in terms of why we use certain things to do things, uh, rhythm. Uh, so it goes into that. That could be a uh, video all of itself. It was very interesting and, uh, yeah. But I, that's, again, that could go into a, a whole other video. <laughs> uh, so here we have, for what would be the high priestess, we have wisdom. And the understanding that we are all our own high priestess is very strong here. I love that we have the kind of calling down the moon, uh, st you know, format, uh, the way she is standing. This is sort of a key image. It was on the artist card as well, uh, which I think is stunning. It's a beautiful image. Um, we have the yin and the yang, yang here. We have the athami and the cup, uh, which really is, shows a melding of the intellect with the intuition. Uh, so I just think that is quite a beautiful um, card, period. And I do apologize, Isabel is getting ramped up. Here we have the goddess. Now this is one of the images that I like. Uh, it's a very cool image. We have a um, almost a steampunky kind of vibe to it. I quite like the image. However, I do think it's very strange. You know, this is the triple aspect of the goddess, which is wonderful. I love the card. Um, we have the maiden mother and crone, but the crone is in this weird, like mirror, mirror on the wall, uh, but in a big weird chair. Uh, I guess, I don't know. What's going on with the crone aspect, I think is quite strange, uh, just in terms of the picture. But I do like the card that we have the triple goddess, um, uh, you know, all the aspects there in the goddess. So I do really love this card. I just think the image is quite strange with the mirror, mirror kind of image there. <laughs> Uh, and I know I have to pick it up or we are never going to get through this. Um, so we do have the God here. Uh, we have the Book of Shadows, uh, which is, I think, wonderful as the Hierophant replacement. And then what I really love about the majors is that all of the Sabbaths are reflected here. Uh, so for the what was the Lovers, we have Beltane, which is on May 1st. Uh, I'm going to not, again, I have to keep moving. <laughs> We have, uh, interestingly, for the chariot, we have this card of transformation, which we generally see death change to transformation. But we actually have the chariot changed here. Uh, but I do quite like the, the fact that uh, she's moving forward of her, uh, her own energy. We have the dark and the light uh, energies here, um, just in the card itself split, uh, instead of the white and the dark horses. Um, but I do like that she's moving with her own volition. This is one of my least favorite images. Um, you know, one of my more problematic. It's, but it's due. I'm just not a huge fan of that sort of 
hair flowing and the giant angel wings you know that just doesn't quite do it for me but it's i do like the card i like the sense of change and movement that's happening uh of, of her, within her own self we have spell casting in what would be the strength card, which I quite like because you really do need to have a focus of all of yourselves. You need to have an integration of self in order, I think, to then manifest outward. Um, and, and the strength card does even speak to that, that idea of that when we heal and reconcile our inner self, that generates energy that manifests outward. Um, so I do quite like that. For the Hermit card, we have the Path, which I think is stunning, and it goes into talking about every person having their own path and walking their own um, life, uh, and so I think that's an amazing card, and I love it. Uh, for the wheel, we have the Wheel of the Year, which does show the Sabbaths. It has a wonderful representation of a tree in the different seasons, which I always adore. Um, it does have the astrological signs, although they are not, uh, they're backwards. They're not put in the order that you generally see them in, uh, but they're still there, and I love that card. Uh, then we have uh, Maybon, or M I think it's Maybon. I, I'm probably going to slaughter some of these. Um, and I quite love this because this is the autumnal equinox. And so we have Demeter, uh, and I've told the story of Demeter and Persephone many times. So I won't kind of keep repeating it. But here we have Demeter who's staying a little bit longer. And so we still have the fall and the harvest sense. Uh, but we have Persephone starting to descend into Hades. Uh, so we know that kind of fall is, is because this is September 21st. So we know that fall is kind of, uh, still in effect, but starting to move towards winter. Um, I think it's gorgeous. Uh, we have the circle uh, here instead of the hanged man. Uh, this is just idea of sacred space and creating sacred space, uh, which I quite like. I don't think it really... Uh, reflects the hangman at all and it doesn't need to for me uh, in this deck but it's about uh, creating a safe and clean environment and setting boundaries uh, so I really do um, I like that uh, here we have Yule uh, which is the winter solstice around December 21st, the longest night of the year. And so we have, you know, even the idea of the bonfire starting and the shift. I just love it. Love it. We have Ostara. Uh, which would be the spring equinox, March 20th or around March 20th, uh, which would be, uh, this would generally be the temperance card, which I think is gorgeous. Um, yeah. I'm trying to keep moving here, people. There's so much. Uh, here we have uh, Lamas, uh, which would have, would, would have been the devil card. Um, and this is August 1st. This is the first of the three uh, harvest festivals. So it's before people are really going into panic of needing to really hoard down on things for the winter. There's lots of celebrations going on. And it talks about it really enjoying the physical world, but that it can obviously lead to overindulgence, which we see with with the devil card. Uh, so this really fits with a lot of the uh, decks like the Llewellyn tarot and things that don't have a, and even like the tarot of the hidden realms with the shadow dan dance. So that acceptance of enjoying the physical, but then when you go too far, uh, we can, um, that's when the overindulgent can step in. Um, instead of the tower, we have omens. Um, and it really does talk about how there isn't bad energy, but there can be inappropriate energy and or energy that's inconvenient. Um, and so, you know, it, this really does function actually quite along the same lines as the tower card. And it's a gorgeous card. Uh, we have Imbolc for the star, which I think is gorgeous. This is the... Um, Sabbath that is coming up. I need to very quickly, because this will be around February 2nd. Uh, this is coming up next week. And so I need to read, uh, finish reading the book I have, the Llewellyn book I have on in bulk. And I will be doing a, a video just on in bulk. As I'm working through the um, Wheel of the Year this year, I will be doing a video for each of the Sabbaths, just in kind of what I'm working my head around them and 
things like that. So that will be uh, coming probably on, on in bulk. Um, so I'll be doing that with each of them. And this is one of the reasons I'm happy to have this deck, um, to have a representation actually of each of the Sabbaths. Uh, and she's just, that's just beautiful with the uh, candles, uh, kind of stars candle on her head. Um, I just think it's beautiful. She does have the traditional imagery, the on land, with foot in the water. Uh, it's beautiful. Uh, here we have Samhain for the moon card. Now, some people I read did say, you know, they didn't quite understand why Samhain wouldn't have been in the death card um, and, and things like that. Uh, to me, it doesn't much matter because I'm just going on the fact that this is the card is Samhain and it does work just in terms of the moon things as well. So this is obviously Halloween um, and it talks about, you know, the darkness and a spiritual connections, a reflection, communication between between realms, um, the half-light idea. I think I do think that this works quite well uh, with the um, with the moon. So I do. I don't have an issue with this, and uh, I love it. <laughs> Here we have. Uh, Litha, which is the summer solstice, which would be around June 20th. Um, this is the longest day. So um, Yule was the longest night and Litha is the longest day. Um, and we have the Oak King in his full power and even the Empress uh, um, or the Goddess we have pregnant. Um, and so it's just beautiful. Um, and it also reflects why I don't like my sun cards to have babies in them because it is supposed to be that full embodiment of that energy. Uh, so we have reaping the fruits of your efforts, coming to fulfillment. You know, it's beautiful. We have initiation instead of judgment, which I quite like. We have that sense of um, kind of giving over to the spiritual calling, um, sort of leaving an old way of living and moving into a new way of living. It works with the ideas of judgment um, and certainly in the sense of paganism and Wicca or witchery, witchy kind of things. I think that it works really well. Um, and I can certainly work with that, uh, the meaning behind that, even uh, if I'm not myself a witch. Um, and then the world card is the only major arcana that was left uh, alone uh, because it is that understanding of the divine in all its aspects so we do have the male aspects surrounding it and the female aspects in the center we have that wreath nod to the wreath in the traditional world card um, and so you know we even have the seasons of life sort of the phases of of age also so i think it's quite a great world card Okay, so the fire suit, as I said, is represented by the elemental of a fire salamander, but its key energy is that of the astrological or the cosmological. It also is very much that God energy other than Venus. So here we have the sun, and then we have Mercury. I mean, the planets, the, the paintings of the planets, I think are absolutely stunning. So we have Mercury. And so this is a card about communication, uh, something that needs to be expressed or heard. I love that. Uh, here we have Venus. Uh, this is attraction to another person, uh, obviously, understandably. We have uh, Mars, which is the desire for action or the need for courage. We have Jupiter. Uh, this is about good fortune, lucky breaks. We have Saturn, which is about a conservative energy, a time to review or analyze. Uh, then we have uh, Uranus here, which I think is gorgeously done. This is uh, expecting the unexpected, enjoying the ride it talks about. Um, we have Neptunes for dreams and fantasies. Uh, it's sort of the desire for um, mystery it talks about. And then we have Pluto as the logical conclusion to a situation. 
great cards. Again, really represent the male energy, I think, wonderfully. Um, and then we have the stars. Uh, this is that idea of fate. Uh, that there are some things that are set in the stars kind of idea. Um, I wouldn't probably read this strictly as fate, but that idea of things that are in the stars, things that are kind of set into motion at birth, I think, would be beautiful. Um, and then we have the elemental of fire. We have the maiden of fire. The mother of fire, which is gorgeous. And then the crone of fire, which I think is a little overboard on the almost bloody-eyed, wrinkled face that she looks like she has gone to the dark side. But <laughs> that's just me artistically. Uh, then we move on to water. Uh, and this has the faces of the goddess. So we do have the union between the male and the female in the ace. This is Aphrodite and Eros, which is about love. This could be a little problematic. I could be wrong, but I believe, isn't this Eros actually the son of Aphrodite, although the gods and goddesses of old were not too concerned with those kinds of problems. <laughs> but anyways, here we have Aphrodite for love. We have Flora for creation and fertility. <clears throat> we have Bridget for healing. We have Bologna for war <clears throat> and chaos sort of idea. Let's talk about emotionally charged situation. Uh, again, one of the things I want to point out artistically, I don't like the use of the Nixies and the Sylphs and the things like that just kind of stuck in there. I think they could have removed those and it would have been much more powerful. Uh, so I, I don't particularly like that. It's the worst, I think, in the air suit. Um, but it's something I can ignore. <clears throat> Here we have Sarah's body, which I'm sure I'm slaughtering the name of, and she represents wisdom and culture and creativity. Uh, we have Mott for justice. We have Caridwin for magic and transformation. Uh, yeah, see, I just, those little things just, yeah. They should just make a deck erasing those and republish it, in my opinion. Uh, here we have Lakshmi. Uh, which is for prosperity and abundance. And then for 10, we have Hecate, or the understanding of the other world, the kind of standing at a crossroads idea. Uh, so we have that going there. So that would be the faces of the goddess. And we have the element of water, the maiden of water, which is gorgeous, the mother of water, gorgeous, and then the crone of water. Again, the artwork on the crone I'm not as thrilled with because very often it just feels like her hands, she's got man hands. It feels like they kind of overdid the decrepitness, but then the bodies are very upright and feeling very much like a young body with just the 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 features being aged. I don't know. There's something about the crones that don't set well with me artistically, but I love the, uh, the ideology of the crone energy being there. Uh, next, we have air, which reflects uh, different forms of divining and interpreting reality. So we have dreams. We have the pendulum. Scrying. With the, we have a crystal ball. We also have a mirror there. Oh, the incense of omens, you know, finding a lucky penny, uh, the clover. Uh, artistically, I, again, don't like these things being stuck in there. I wish they weren't there. Uh, but I, a black cat, you know, those kinds of ideas. We have Psalms tree, uh, which I think is wonderful. Your own strength, what it is that you're born with, I think is wonderful. I love that card. We have the attendant. This is the idea of a familiar or an animal helper or an animal guide, or just the understanding of guides. Uh, we have I Ching here. Uh, so I love this because this is the idea of the answer is within the question. This is what it focuses on. I, I think that's really wonderful. Uh, we have meditation and the understanding the power of the mind. We have runes. Uh, this is about wisdom and knowledge that's gained at a straw high price. Now, somebody, you know, kind of uh, joked about this noose being very, very small. Um, I, 
I don't know. I think it's a great card, even with these in the trees. <laughs> uh, this is, I think, the, uh, one of the worst representations of the uh, sylphs uh, just being kind of stuck on there. I don't like those at all, but I love that we do have a tarot reader. Um, and this is about the potential to easily achieve goals. I don't really see that so much, but is giving yourself more control of a situation by kind of understanding the energies that are going on. And she is reading from the um, As Above deck, which I think is fantastic. Uh, the Actually, what's funny is the Steampunk Tarot, which I traded for this, also has uh, a tarot reader in it reading from this, its deck. <laughs> So then uh, we have the Maiden of Air, which is gorgeous. I absolutely love this Mother of Air because I really equate to the Queen of Swords. Um, and we have her surrounded with books. So there's just nothing not to love about that. The Crone of Air, uh, yeah, she's a little creepy. The art style of this particular artist, because this deck does have more than one artist. I, and the most part, I think it's quite cohesive. There are a couple cards that are pretty obviously not of the same artist. Uh, I believe these are probably by the same people. Uh, so Hecate um, and then this one. And so it's quite uh, a little bit jarring, but there's not very many like that. Uh, I can work with her. She does kind of look, um, you know, like an old wise woman uh, kind of idea. So I do like her better than the other crones. Uh, then we have, oh, that should have been first. So then we have the elemental of air. I love the pages. The pages uh, on the, <laughs> the book pages, I should say. Uh, then we come to the earth element, which is um, magic of the natural world of or of this planet that we are on. And this I quite like, other than I've already discussed the smudging out of the physical features. I don't get it because, again, Low Scarabio puts out many decks with nudity. Um, so I'm not sure why that is there. It should have been done as a loincloth or something because that looks ridiculous. Uh, but I'm just going to ignore it. I do like that we have sort of all the aspects we have, you know, fire and we have water and we have air and earth kind of incorporated into because this is the earth energy and all of those things represent in earth um so then we have the ace so the ace is represents the human body uh the uh two is the beach so i love these because this is about liminal space um kind of imbalance with both of these aspects it's, not, it's the water and the earth um, we have plant life, th things working together. You need the soil and the rain and the sunshine and everything kind of working together. Um, so I love that. Uh, we have the stones and crystals for storing power and resources. Uh, we have the mountains and waterfalls, something that's going to take a long time to, to deal with um, and also needing to kind of go with the flow and the power that's there. Uh, I love the tree in the forest, that transition between, you know, going into the dark of the forest. Uh, so we have that uh, movement, like with the Six of Swords, from a new place, a transition from one state to another, it talks about. Uh, we have sea creatures uh, paying attention to your environment, being very sensitive to energetic flow. Um, I do, I love that. We have air creatures reaching higher, stretching further, dreaming bigger, it talks about. Um, this one people do talk about because we have probably the saddest looking cow and we almost feel like he feels like he's getting ready to be eaten by these gnomes down here because he looks so sad. But... Uh, I do like the, the idea of it because this is land creatures um, and this card is about uh, just not worrying about past or fret future, uh, simply just being where you are in that very moment. Um, and I do love that because the cow is just sitting there. It's not worrying about the past. It's not worrying about the future. It's just chewing its cud. Uh, so it could have been a slightly happier cow, but that's okay. 
Then we have uh, the card with all the guard gnomes all over the earth, which I think is pretty hilarious. Uh, but this is about time. Um, so the full day, the cycle of time, you know, that idea of there's a time and a season for everything and that the world in our world works on this on cycles of time. Uh, so I do quite love that. And then we have the element of earth. The Maiden of Earth, I love her. I think she looks very uh, elemental. She looks very fey. The gorgeous Mother of Earth. And yeah, another strange crone for me. I don't, I like that she has white hair. I think that I like that she's aged, but then her body looks very much like youthful. And uh, which doesn't, which I think I guess is a good thing because obviously our sensuality and sexuality doesn't go away just because we aren't youthful anymore. Um, and so I, I do in some ways appreciate it, but I guess just all the crone artwork to me, there's just something that feels a little bit off. Uh, we have a very, you know, curvaceous, you know, hourglassy figure and then very man hands. Um, so it's just more the artwork of the crones that isn't my favorite, but I, again, love the idea of the crones being in there. Um, in terms of shuffling, I did play with these yesterday. They shuffle really beautifully. Uh, let me go out. Here. They shuffle gorgeously. I, I like thin cardstock. I say it with every deck like this. It feels very much Llewellyn-y, although it's, it's, you know, it's long and narrow, uh, but it shuffles great. Uh, there is, again, some shipping on it because this is a used deck, uh, but it isn't uh, bad. I don't know if you can see. I think you can kind of see a little bit there when you fan it out, uh, but it isn't anything horrible. Um, and again, probably when I do the edges, if I can find the right color ink, uh, that will take care of that because I, I don't intend to trim this deck. Uh, but you can definitely get a lovely rifle shuffle with this. Now I'm not gonna go into a full reading with this uh, because Again, this is longer. I have been trying to come back. I, I know I, I haven't done it on all, but I've been trying to come back and then just do a separate video with a full reading, uh, which is probably because I did like that large reading that comes with this uh, or is in the guidebook. Uh, so I, I plan on doing a separate video of that reading. Um, because I do, I, I played with it last night and I did quite like that um, spread. I just wanted to get a good shuffle in. But just so you can see, I mean, they're quite gorgeous. Um, I, I like the idea, this isn't in the book, but I like the idea of kind of doing the as above, so below, because that's kind of the idea of this. Uh, so the as above, so below, because you can kind of do, again, stuff that's going on in the conscious and unconscious. Um, you do have past, present, and future uh, that is, um, you know, that you can access with sort of two card uh, splits there. You can also kind of do the intermingling that you do. I, you know, this is a... a, a this is a um, spread that I really like to use with Lenormand and Kipper uh, type decks, uh, but I think that this, given this deck, I think this is actually one spread that I will probably use quite a bit. You know, so what do we have going in the mind? What's going on in the conscious realm? What's going on in the unconscious uh, realm and sort of below aspects here? You know, how are those intertwining? And, and again, looking at the past, present, and future, uh, there's quite a lot that you could do with this. Um, and so that this is a spread that I intend to work with this deck quite a bit. Um, on. So anyways, I just kind of wanted you to see some of the cards uh, laid out, even though I didn't do a full reading. 
Um, I'm really excited to work with this deck. I will need the cheat sheet, I think, for a little while. Well, this is Bologna, I know, is the goddess of war. Uh, even after just reading through the guidebook, like we do have Pluto here, but I, for a little while, I you know, will probably have to look up this idea of there being a logical conclusion. Uh, of course, you can bring in your own understandings of Pluto uh, astrologically. That's why I think that to some degrees, you want to just run with this. Uh, the other degrees, I think you do need to at least give the guidebook a real, you know, a fair shake and really kind of get an understanding of the system, and then uh, having the added layer of being able to. Um add in the traditional correspondences. Um, so I do think that there is a, putting a little bit of work into this deck uh, will pay out in having a quite uh, layered uh, reading. And so I'm actually really excited about using uh, this deck. I'm going to definitely be using it uh, in conjunction with the Wheel of the Year as well as the Wildwood. So anyways, this has been a look at the Book of Shadows Tarot uh, with the guidebook is by Barbara Moore. Uh, it does not in this list out the artist, but from what I understand, it is multiple. Yeah, here we go. Uh, the guidebook is by Barbara Moore. The artwork is by Simone Gabriella Grzegorz Krasinski, Franco Rivoli, and Petro Scola di Mambro. I am sure I have slaughtered most of those uh, names. Uh, you know, I just thought I would do a quick, and I'll see if I have time to squeeze this, and I'm not going to uh, pay too, uh, you know, go into things too deeply with it, but I thought I would do what I did with the wooden tarot. And sort of, you know, a lot of people interview their deck and just sort of see how we're going to work together. I have my four, obviously, main talismans that you guys all see all the time. Um, I thought, you know, they can say hello to this new deck. <laughs> Energetically, say hello. And we would just kind of see, you know, what... I'm going to use that as above, so below, because I just feel like that resonates for me really strongly with this deck. And... Uh, just kind of see what it's going to bring to the table. So we have above. Oops. I think with my, we'll move that up so you can see it's still in picture. Move this up a ways. Hopefully we can going to say hello to my pendulum. Sorry for Isabel. She's like saying, okay, stop recording for a little while now and talk to me. <laughs> so here we have, uh, so kind of what's it going to bring in the, in the realm of the mind and the conscious and bring to the forefront mentally? We have uh, Lamas, which is that idea uh, for me, that means that is that really kind of indulgence of the mind. Uh, I love to revel in the mind and the mental aspects. And I do think that this um, has uh, very much to do with that. This deck excites that in me because we do have so many uh, learning things that you can apply to this uh, particular deck uh, that gets my mind going. Uh, but then it also is going to kind of show where, th where I, my mind can certainly overtake myself. The lo logic and reason can sometimes over um, compensate, and so there is that sort of a reminder to 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 not uh, go too crazy mentally like Isabel is going crazy with whipping her toy around. <laughs> uh, we also have the Six of Airs, which is uh, the familiar. That is that sense of a spirit guide, an animal guide, you know, that kind of thing. So I like that, that idea that this can this deck will be sort of a guide uh, for me on my path of learning. This person looks like they're really studying hard and working to learn a lot of different new things, and that this will be a guide, which I think is quite well. 
uh, what this deck will do in terms of the kind of pagan systems. Um, and then we also have up here the uh, Two of Fire, which is Mercury. And so this is about communication. And this is about really getting into things that need to be expressed and also things that need to be heard. I really like that dual aspect of this card. And so I think that's fantastic. I will take that from this deck, if that's what this deck has to offer. <laughs> um, and so, so below, sort of the intuitive realm, uh, we have initiation, sort of a take on a new path, uh, which is, I think is wonderful because it is, um, my intention, sorry about my phone, it's way over there, I'm ignoring it. Um, my intention is to use this um, to further my understanding of, I, I have done a lot of study in the basic tenets of paganism, um, but I'm tending to use this a lot in the wheel of the year, so I find like this is kind of taking me um, on that next step of the journey of kind of um, understanding certain areas um, and so I love that I'm sorry but she has reached her limit to my filming and being quiet I'm not that she has much of a limit to that anyways <laughs> but so I'm going to but I needed to wrap this up quickly anyway uh, but we do have I have to look her up because um, we do have Sarah's Bati, which is about wisdom. Uh, this is about creative expression. Um, I really do like this because it's talking about um, expression of feelings and thoughts and allowing for self-understanding. Uh, so that idea of really, and I love the lotus because then we do have the as above, so below that we take, you know, in the lotus itself. Uh, so I do love that. Uh, we also do have um, the runes here, that so that in, in, in an intuitive level, in a subconscious deep level, this is that idea of gaining knowledge, but with, you know, that you have to sacrifice. And you also do have to allow for the new perception that you think about with the hanged man. Um, so, which isn't, this isn't obviously the hanged man, but we just, you know, runes and Odin getting the... <laughs> I do equate that with the hangman energy. Uh, so, um, yeah, I actually am really happy with what this has to say about what it is going to uh, offer up um, as a deck and working with me. And so I thought I'd throw that in there really quickly if I have time just so you can kind of see, see them working. So I'm now going to end this video. <laughs> All right, have a wonderful day.